Okay, let's talk about metabolism of macronutrients. Macronutrients. So we're trying to make our link between, between nutrition, what we take in, and some of the other information we've gone over over cellular respiration. So let's see, let's go ahead and write out our macronutrients. We have proteins, we have carbohydrates, we have fats. And we can use all these macronutrients as an energy source, and it's best to use them together. So. Here's an example. I wouldn't want to use just protein by itself. I could survive for a little bit, but eventually I would have what's called protein poisoning. If all I ever did was eat proteins, in order to get enough calories to sustain myself, I'd have to eat excessive amounts of proteins, and that urea would build up in the body, and nitrogen would also build up in the body, and, and I would essentially poison myself. This happens in starvation situations where an individual can, let's say, only access snowshoe hair and the meat is so lean, has no fat on it, that they're having to take in so much protein but they're not mixing it with some sort of fat and so they end up poisoning themselves. But that's kind of a different subject. So carbohydrates have four kcals when I'm referring to kcals, I'm referring to kilocalories. And so if you look on the back of, of the food products you take in, it'll say calories. Well, they're actually referring to kcals, not actual calories. So that's why I'm writing this out. And then fats have nine kcals. I guess I can put an S there. And so you can see our body uh, stores most energy in lipids or fats because it can hold a lot more calories so it can hold a lot more energy in there so let's break this down we already know carbohydrates so um, we're gonna break this polysaccharide down to a monosaccharide so let's write glucose something that we kind of understand at this point if you've watched the other videos and that could be eventually broken down into PGAL. And if you need a more thorough explanation of this, you can watch some other videos. And this is an oversimplification, of course. There are a lot of other steps that I'm leaving out, but this will give you the, the broad overview of what you need to know. And then we have pyruvate. That's a U here, if, if it's hard to see. And eventually acetyl-CoA. A coenzyme, and then this would enter into the Krebs cycle. So I'll draw that in just a second. Actually, I'll draw it now. So let's go ahead and draw out the Krebs cycle here. So the Krebs cycle, and go all the way around here. And that's a whole process, and, and I'll get to that in a little bit. So let's just write Krebs cycle here so that you'll know what I'm referring to. So and we, when we exercise, carbohydrates would be our choice of fuel. So even fats can be converted to um, carbohydrates, or not carbohydrates, but to glucose. So. Let's write this out real quick so you can kind of see how fats are used. And again, this is an oversimplification. You have a triglyceride, so we have a glycerol. We have a fatty acid here. We have a fatty acid here. Acid here. So we've got three fatty acids. So let me group this here so that this kind of makes sense. So 
So there's our triglyceride. There are three fatty acids linked to that glycerol. Well, this glycerol can be used to make PGAL, so it can enter here. We're going through glycolysis, and we can use the fatty acids to go all the way down to acetyl-CoA. So, and then let's go over here to proteins, and proteins can be broken down into amino acids. So we have amino acids here. And we talked about that, but um, these can be used several different ways. So we can go all automatically down here to pyruvate or pyruvic acid, just depending on the literature you read. Same thing. Uh, we can go into acetyl CoA, or we can go directly into the Krebs cycle from here. So there's the macronutrients that you would use. Um, for metabolism, so you've got proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. And so, if you ever look on the back of your um, nutritional facts on a on a food product, that's what you're going to see. It's going to break it down into proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. And let's talk a little bit about where this process happens. So, all of this, let's say this is a cell here. All of this is happening out here in the cytosol. So this is happening in the fluid portion of a cell. So we have all this happening out here in the cytosol. And then this portion here is going to take place in the Krebs cycle inside the mitochondria. So we have acetyl-CoA that comes in. And so the Krebs cycle itself is going to happen out here in the matrix. And then the electron transport chain which is what we've talked about in other videos is going to happen out here in this inner membrane space so the ETC happens here in that inner membrane space inside that crystal here in the inner membrane space of the mitochondria so we would have um, glycolysis happening out here And then this is all out in the cytosol, so glycolysis all happens out in the cytosol. And then you would have acetyl-CoA enter the Krebs cycle, and the Krebs cycle is in the matrix, in the mitochondrial matrix. And then once, if, if this was aerobic, we would have the energy production happen in the electron transport chain down here in the inner membrane space of the mitochondria, and that is another video. Let's talk about how much of these macronutrients should we take in. So we'll link this a little bit to nutrition here. So 55 to 60 percent of your total caloric cons consumption percent should happen from carbohydrate. So this is total calories. We're taking in so 55 to 60 percent should come from carbohydrate, 20 to 30 percent should come from fats. So 20 to 30 percent should come from fats, and 15 to 20 percent should come from proteins. And this is exact, you know, not exact for everybody, you know, based on how much you work out, how much you train, the type of training you do you may have to adjust this somewhat, but definitely 55 to 60 percent should come from carbohydrates so you have enough energy source to keep you going. Um, I've seen some elite level athletes switch these out so that 20 to 30 percent is coming from protein and 15 to 20 from fat. But for the average person, the average person that's not an elite level athlete, these numbers would be good. And you notice that they vary because a lot of the literature varies and, and everybody's different. So you're not going to have an exact number that's going to fit everybody. So 55 to 60 percent from carbohydrate would be ideal. And we're talking about like whole grains, some sort of complex carbohydrate that's going to stay with you, um, which will eventually be broken down into a simple sugar. But um, it'll take a little bit longer to digest, and then 20 to 30 percent from fats, and then and these are good fats like monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, 
um, ones that are going to have an impact on your HDL, LDL levels. So we want to raise HDL with this good cholesterol and lower LDL. And we'll talk about that later in, in another um, video. And then 15 to 20 percent from protein. And this is where a lot of athletes overdo it. They start taking in supplements thinking, oh, I've got to have all this protein because I'm working out. About 15 to 20 percent of your total calories you take in should come from protein. Now, if you're a an elite level um, endurance athlete, then you might want to take in more, but you don't want to take in too much protein. So you don't want to overdo it. So I hope this kind of helps break down macronutrients and how they're used, and hopefully this links us to other lectures when we talked about glycolysis and the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain and how you can see how these macronutrients up here are used inside um, of glycolysis and how they're used inside the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain to help generate ATP. So ATP. So we have substrate phosphorylation happening out here in glycolysis and then we have oxidative phosphorylation happening down here in the electron transport chain. So substrate phosphorylation in glycolysis in the Krebs cycle and then um, oxidative phosphorylation happening down here in the electron transport chain. So I hope this clarifies everything and next video we'll kind of talk about the aerobic system and anaerobic system and kind of break this down into a simplified form. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next